questions up today because I do, because I'm expecting for the gifts of the Spirit to flow, uh, for the good and the profit of all. I'm expecting to hear from God. Amen. I've prepared. I've got notes. I've studied. Da 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 da. But at, when you get up here, you kind of just kind of. Okay, God, what you want to do? Because sometimes he want to do something different. But just kind of remind you, everybody pretty much got one of these on their seats when they came in this morning. Uh, we got a food drop coming up. So if you or someone you know needs some food, it's a good time to take advantage. But it's clearly spelled out on there how you got to take advantage of it. Uh, so don't come up looking for a food box if you don't have a blue voucher. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Amen? Let's pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, God, that you are God and that you're the one God that knows everything and, and, and we don't have to try to figure everything out. But God, we make ourselves available today that what it is you want us to know, we say yes to it. And Father God, we make ourselves available and willing today to yield to you to do, God, the things you've told us to do and the things you've tell us to do. But God, we can't do it in our own ability. So we're asking for your help. We're asking for your grace today, your willingness to give us your ability, God, to live, hallelujah, to be able to give, your ability, God, to receive. Open the eyes of our understanding, give us understanding hearts and hearing ears, in Jesus' name, if you agree with that, say amen. So be it. Let it happen. Well, I just want to take a little time and just, uh, first of all, give thanks to God. Also, to thank Pastor Jeff and Jamie, our senior pastors here. Uh, they're, they're out in the way, having a good time about now. Amen. So just keep them in your prayers. But I thank them for the privilege to be able to come up and uh, share the word. It's an awesome privilege. Um, not too many places you go where the senior pastor allows different people to get up and speak on a regular basis, but it's a privilege here. So I, I take it not lightly uh, because it's a serious business, amen? Because one word, heard or not heard, can make the difference of somebody surviving or not. It can make the difference of somebody making a good choice or a bad choice. Uh, so I need your prayers and your participation, <laughs> amen? In this part of the service, don't be a spectator, but engage your faith and draw on God and on the gift that he's put in me, whatever that may be. And, and it just seems like every chance, I, every time I get an opportunity to share, it usually runs in one or two veins. And I stop fighting it because uh, that's just how it rolls. It's either faith or obedience. I mean, you know, it's just something along that line. So if that's the way we go today, just, you know, that's the way we go today. Amen. But it, for those who like to take notes, the title of what we're looking to share to you today, the word from God today, would be reality check. Uh, it comes from time to time. We need to have a reality check. Anybody ever need to have a reality check? <laughs> I mean, you know, reality is that thing which we have considered and deemed to be authentic, bona fide, for real. What we think, you know, this ain't fake. It ain't an illusion. Uh, and then sometimes you got to examine what's going on in your head, what's going on in your life and your relationships. You need to have a checkup on what's for real. You need to have a reality check sometime. But speaking from a spir spiritual sp uh, perspective, there has been times that God has given me to say there's times for reality checks, not so much of what I'm thinking not so much of what I'm feeling, not so much of what's going on that I can perceive with my natural eyes, but we as believers, any believers in the house? I see a few of them out there. But as believers, we're commanded and instructed by the Word of God that we are to live out, a, out of a different reality than the one we can perceive and see with our natural eyes. So hence the title, it's time that we have a reality check. Are you living out of the unseen reality or are you living more out of what you see than what's unseen? Well, let me put it this way. Y'all looking at me kind of funny like, what, what, what you talking about? Uh, 
We as believers have kind of gotten good at knowing how to act. You know, we've gotten good of how maybe to believe. We know the right things to say, but we stink sometimes at receiving. Come on. I could have got a bigger amen than that or a bigger ouch or something. I mean, how many times have you run into Christian believers that they believe something and they know it's true, but they don't ever get it? It's time for a reality check. I think we got the right word today, just from the looks on y'all faces. Amen? We should be living more out of the unseen things than we do out of the seen things. I guess the question is, is what you're looking at? I, I'm reminded of a story before, this ain't on, on my notes, Ryan, so just stick with me, of a story in 2 Kings, the third chapter, and, and I, I, I should have refreshed myself a little bit on it, but I didn't know I was going to share it, so I guess I couldn't have did that, could have. <laughs> but I know it was an a, a issue going on with the king of Israel and uh, Jehoshaphat and Je, Je, Joram, I think his name was, and the king of Moab used to pay, pay to the king of jo, uh, King Joram some, some, some taxes, if you will, and he rebelled. And after the king of Moab rebelled and was not paying these taxes no more, uh, he came to the king Jehoshaphat and said, come on, help me and go fight this, this king, Mo, king of Moab. So he said, yeah, we're to go. King uh, Jehoshaphat prayed and said, yeah, we'll go. Uh, and then they, they talked and said, we're going to go this way through the desert. And so they went through the way of the desert. And as they were traveling to go attack the king of Moab, they couldn't find any water. I'm talking about living out of this reality or that reality. Come on. And as believers, if you're living primarily out of this reality, you won't be able to receive out of that reality. Are you with me so far? I'm not saying you don't live in this reality. This stuff is real, okay? I ain't saying you don't deal with things in this reality. I'm laying just a little foundation here before we get into it. But this reality was made by that reality. Hallelujah, glory to God. But okay, back to the king story. They were going through the desert, and they couldn't find any water. And so uh, the, they called for a minstrel, and he began to play, and they began to prophesy. And they said, thus says the word of the Lord, you won't see no rain, and you won't feel no wind, but fill this valley with ditches, and you and your children and horses, uh, all you and your men and horses and animals will drink. How many of you need to drink today? Come on. How many of you need a miracle today? How many of you need some things to change today? How many of you need to receive some things that have been promised by God? You start to need to dig some ditches today and not be looking. I'm asking what you're looking at today. Are you looking at what you're feeling? Are you looking at what you're seeing? Or are you looking at the unseen reality? You ain't going to feel no wind. You're not going to see no rain to receive out of this unseen realm. And a lot of times we focus on what we feel and what we see and what we hear and what we smell. And when you're doing that, you're not in faith. And how can you receive something that you don't see? How can you receive something that is unseen? Come on, I'm asking the question. Oh, come on. I got y'all know the answer. Some of y'all do. There's only one way to receive something that's unseen. Now y'all looking at me say, well, how can you receive it if it's unseen? You can't see God, can you? But how many of you believe you received him? Come on. I think we we getting there. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 See, one of the reasons that we have a hard time receiving the unseen is we tend to attempt to access things by using seen things. We pray and ask God for something, 
and then we begin to check to see if it's there. Come on. You need a job. You pray for a job. Then you go somewhere to see if this is the job. You're focusing on what you're seeing to determine if you have received it. Stick with me, stick with me. If you're focusing on what you see to see if you've received it, you won't have it. That's contrary to the Word of God. Y'all still, I feel it. We're we, we going to get there. Let's read the Scripture. Maybe that'll help us out a little bit. Amen? Now, in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, in context, Paul was writing the verse we're getting ready to read, but what was going on in his life at the time that he was being really persecuted and life was tough, okay? It was hard. He had a lot of difficulties going on. Uh, but he made a statement that is a principle or a, a something that we need to lay hold of and, and receive also. And in verse 18, 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, in the Amplified, it says, Since... We consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are visible are temporal, brief, and fleeting, but the things that are invisible are deathless and everlasting. In the Message Bible, it says, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today and gone tomorrow, but the things we cannot see will last forever. See, Paul, Paul in that writing, he was saying, see, this don't bother me. I don't get distressed. If I don't get, any of you been filled with anxieties? Come on. Anybody been filled with fears and worries and trouble? See, that's because you're looking at what's before you. But if it's temporary, as the Word says, then it's subject to change. If it went from good to bad, it's subject to go from bad to good. But the things in the unseen realm are fixed. They never change. And Paul is, was encouraging us to look on the unseen things because he began to say, this ain't my home. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. This ain't my home. Come on, I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm just on deployment here. I'm just an ambassador for Christ here. Come on, I'm just taking care of some business here until I get my call back home from active duty. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He was focusing on the real deal, the things that are eternal. He was focusing on looking at the unseen things. Are y'all are tracking with me? Come on. Stay with me now. I just want to talk briefly about three things. It's not all inclusive, but there's three things that we need to have as part of our belief system to make sure that we're living out of the unseen reality and not out of the seen reality. Now, we live in this reality, as Jesus said, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Come on. We got to breathe. We got to eat. We got to make money. We got to work. You know, we got to do all the stuff you do in this, in this reality, but you don't live out of it. You don't take and receive what you need out of it. For the Word of God has declared the just must, shall live by faith. Come on. What are you looking at? Number one, these are three things that will help us in receiving the unseen. You got to believe. And when we say believe, we mean you got to have faith. Okay? Because sometimes we throw that word belief out that I believe when really we don't have faith or heartfelt faith. We just have an agreement that is true. Come on. I mean, I've heard people a lot of times, do you believe God can heal you? Yes, I believe God can heal you. But all the time they're looking at the scene and they're making plans according to what they see in the natural in the physical reality, the things that they can perceive with their natural eyes, which then tells to me, you don't have faith. Now, I, I, don't get me wrong. We're not saying you throw away your medicine. I, 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 I thank God for doctors, okay? Thank God for lawyers. Thank God for mechanics. <laughs> Come on. All those folks that do their professional deal. 
I've used doctors. I ain't used no lawyer yet, thank the Lord. <laughs> Had an opportunity to, but my faith was active in that situation, and uh, we just used our Lord and pulled from the unseen and got the case dismissed in a weird way. Amen. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying you don't use those things, but you don't look to those things and put your confidence in those things. Are you with me? In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, uh, the good word, you may not have this one, Ryan, but uh, I'll read it. The good word translation, I mean God's word translation says, indeed, our lives are guided by faith and not by sight. In the Amplified, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. The reason we sometimes have challenges in walking by faith, one reason is that we've touched on a few, but one reason, you got to walk by faith. you got to believe. And when I say believe, I mean faith. That I consider the things that are not revealed to my natural eyes are more real than the things that are revealed to my natural eyes. Come on. If God says, by your stripes you were healed, I believe or fully persuaded and convinced that that's more real than what the doctor sees on the x-ray. But the challenge is, is the reason we don't get there is as Pastor Tony was sharing during the offering, we don't participate. We don't do what God has told us to do to have that kind of live, active faith. We, are, we, we steep ourselves and, st- and stay too tuned in to carnal things. To be carnal, all that means is not just a sexual or sinful thing. Being carnally minded is simply focusing more on what your five senses are giving you than what the Word of God has said. And we become too carnal and we're unable to tap in and receive or take the unseen stuff out of the unseen reality. Because there's only one way to lay hold of, to take, to receive out of the unseen reality, and that's by? So you got to be, uh, be in faith to receive out of the unseen. You cannot access or receive from the unseen reality by focusing on what you see. You can't base what you receive out of the unseen by on what others see or what others have experienced. And a lot of times we use other people's experience or what other people say they see, like the doctor sees something under the microscope. We put our focus on what they're focusing on. We put our focus on what happened to them. And when you don't focus on what God has said, see, this book, this Bible, is... If, if I would kind of sum it up what this is, this is a clear description of what is happening and what exists and how it functions the, in the unseen reality. This explains how that all the stuff that is not revealed to our natural senses is working and what's over there. That's why God told Moses to be sure you make the tabernacle stuff exactly the way I I told you, because it's a replica of the real deal. Come on, you gotta see this. The Old Testament is just replicas of what really exists that's not revealed yet to our natural senses. Come on. The high priest was a replica of the real high priest. The real high priest, Jesus, he lives forevermore. And what does a high priest do? He ministers to the people. The Old Testament high priest could just minister covering of sin. The new high priest ministers eternal life. Come on. You got to get fully persuaded in these things so you can receive them. And only way, there's only one way to get fully persuaded in this. The way you get fully persuaded in the thing up. Hearing it, looking at it, talking about it, more than you do the other stuff. Somebody say amen. We can do what God say we can. Amen. Oh, that's a new rap song. I'm sorry. (laughs) 
In other words, a lot of times we focus on wanting to get there when we need to focus on what we need to get there. In other words, if I had a tall ladder here going to the ceiling, I almost brought one out, but, you know, for time's sake, I figured I could just explain it. I could stand here all day and look at the top of that 50-foot ladder and say, I need to get to the top of that ladder. And that's what we do sometimes as believers. I'll never receive the reality of being up there unless I focus on the first step. Come on. A lot of times we focus on wanting to feel better or wanting to have enough finances to meet our needs and to be a blessing. We focus on getting, on being there when we need to focus on how to get there. People that are wealthy didn't focus on wanting to be wealthy. They focused on school. They focused on the books, the homework. They focused on how to hone their skill as a mechanic or as a business entrepreneur. They focused on being disciplined, getting up and studying. They focused on knowing how to do books and how to handle money. And before you know it, they was rich. But we focus on wanting to be there, feel, wanting to feel better, or desiring something real bad, or needing something real bad, is not faith. And God does not respond to that. Now, he's a merciful God, and he stands ready every morning to help us and spare us and forgive us. But I'm talking to some folks that want to be mature in this thing. I mean, he'll help you in that. He'll help people that way. Don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about on purpose living by faith. On purpose walking by faith. On purpose taking a reality check every day to say, okay, where am I living out of? Am I living out of what I see? See, when you don't live out of what you see, you don't have to grieve like those that have no hope. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be hopeless. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the earth. And I'm not talking about just mentally agreement with that, but that you become so steeped in that that you believe big old almighty God, the God that created the heavens and the earth, is in me. I'm fully persuaded of that. That God exists the way he says he exists. And everything that he promised is the way he said it is. I see it, not with these natural eyes, but by faith I do. Come on. And when you walk and live in that place where you can't just quote the latest, uh, uh, you know, all the latest shows on TV and nothing wrong with TV, but some of it is, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, when you are more steeped in and you know what's going on in this seen reality more than you know what's going on in the unseen, you got a problem. When you need something from that unseen realm, you won't be able to take it. Are y'all with me? In other words, you must believe. You must have faith. You doubt, you do without. You believe, you can receive. In Mark 9 and 23, it says, and Jesus said, you say to me, if you can do anything, why all things are possible to him who believes. In Luke 1 and 37, it says, for with God, Nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Believing deals with unseen things. Believing, having faith, deals with unseen things. Once you're dealing with seen things, there's no longer any need for faith. Faith always deals with unseen things. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith now is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, things that are not perceived by our natural sight. So if you are dealing with seeing things, you're not in faith. 
I'm giving you this. I don't have time to talk about and teach about how to get faith and all that, but you need to get crack the book yourself, get in the book yourself, get you. We got bunches of resources back there on faith and different stuff. You need to become a student of the Word of God and know that you know that you know how to obtain faith, how to operate in faith, know when you're in faith, and know when you're not out of faith. Because in order to live out of the unseen realm, to receive the things that God has promised for you, whether it be a miraculous healing, whether it be a deliverance from something, whether there be protection, whether it, whatever it may be, wisdom, joy, peace, whatever it is, it's all got to be accessed by faith. Amen? But now that you got faith and now that you believe, here's the question, number two. Believe what? What am I supposed to believe? Not the specifics of uh, believe God for healing, but let's get in kind of a general, general context. Believe what? Mark eleven twenty four 24 out of God's Word translation. You got that in that translation, Ryan? Don't have that translation? Okay, I'll just read it. It says, that's why I tell you to have faith that you have already received whatever you pray for and it will be yours. In the King James it says, believe, believe that you have received E-D and then you shall have it. You got to first have faith. You first got to believe what? What you have to believe is you've already received it. Not the tangible thing because faith always deals with the unseen. It's not talking about believing that you have received whatever it is you asked for, but it's saying believe that you have received and then you shall have it. What you got to believe is not it's the will of God. You don't have to believe that, that you necessarily got your healing, you got to believe that you've received. Oh, come on, stay with me. You just got to believe you've taken it, that you've laid hold of it. Not the thing, but that you have received it. Let me give you a natural example. I got a bunch of them going on in my head right now. Oh, whoo. thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I mean, you do a, anybody shop on Homes Shopping Network? Anybody do mail order, anything, online? Oh, we got a few here. But you, by natural belief in this company, you order something. And once you hit the button or make the phone call, you believe you received it. You don't have nothing yet, but you believe you received it. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? But too often we change our vision and begin to look for the scene to determine if we got it yet when we deal with spiritual stuff. But in the natural, we don't have a problem with this. I'll give you another example. Uh, anybody ever hooked up TVs and put a DV to it or a VHS or VHR? I mean, there's certain settings you have to do to receive the signal from that DVD player. Old school is channel three, you know what I'm saying? New school is AV1, AV2, CBBBB, you know. Uh, you follow what I'm saying? But if you don't, put it on channel three or have it on AV one or two, you will not receive that signal that's unseen. You can look all day long on channel four, but you will not see that. But soon as you put it on channel three, whether that thing is on or not, you believe, you get upset if for some reason you ain't seeing what you're supposed to see. Because you know there should be an unseen signal being sent eventually to where you can see it with these natural eyes. Are, are, you, are you feeling me yet? Are you feeling me? Okay. So three things we can do to begin to become better receivers is one, we've got to be sure we're in faith. We've got to be sure we're believing, heartfelt belief based on something, not based on nothing. Faith, believing, God kind of believing, spiritual kind of faith believing is always based on something, not nothing. And it's got to be based on something God said. Not what you feel, not how you want it, not what. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to find out if God said it. You can't have faith and confidence in me that I'm going to pay your next bill for you if I ain't said it. That's just presumption and foolishness. But if I, you heard me say, I'm going to pay your bill, just bring them to me. I'll take care of it. You can put all your confidence. You, gotta, you know, if I got the money. Uh, you can put all your confidence 
in me to make that happen. You follow what I'm saying? God has all the power to back up what he said he'll do. Amen? Everything seen was made by something unseen. A lot of times we put the prim, the, the, make this what we see more important or greater than the things we read in here. Sometimes we get to the place where we just hope it's hope, hope it's true. We, we ain't got no other option, so we better pray and believe God. No, I'm saying here's where you start because what's in here reveals that everything out here was made by what you can't see. We understand, Hebrews 1, that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Unseen. Unseen. The reality over there. Reality check, people. If we're believers, and if we're going to receive what God says is ours, if we're going to walk in the authority, the power, the love, the joy, the peace, the health, the healing, come on. We're going to have to lay hold of, we're going to have to become good at taking, receiving, become participators in what God has said the way we do things so that we can draw out of the unseen reality to use over here when we're in this physical world. Somebody can get your miracles today. Miracles ain't something that's hard to get. They're hard to get because you're focusing on what you see. Miracles are nothing more than something happening that's contrary to the established principles and laws in this reality. And those laws over there supersede, those principles over there supersede every time the principles and laws that are over here in this seen reality. Reality check, folks. If you believe this thing, we ought to be living this thing. Or let's just quit. And go on and just live like mere normal people that don't have this almighty God we talk and sing about. And now, see, I, this makes me mad. I, ain't, I wasn't going to do it. I'm going to go there, though. It really makes me mad when I hear people talk about my Father God that I'm fully persuaded in. He's given me grace to believe. He's given me grace to understand and comprehend him. It's not my own doing. It's him working in me, but I've received it. I've yielded to it. Come on. But it really upsets me and gets me kind of that thing like Jesus did when he beat people out the temple. When I hear people begin to be explain away why God didn't do what he promised he would do. That makes me mad. It does. Why you didn't get healed because of this and that and this and that and that's it. I don't understand everything, but this I do understand. God is not a man that he lies, and neither is he a son of man that he should repent. If God said by his stripes you were healed, if God said I've been redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law of sin and death. If God said sin no longer has dominion over me, I don't have to do what the devil tells me to do. I don't have to obey the lust of my flesh if I'm doing what he says do. If you ain't doing what he says do, you, you might. You, you might yield to your flesh. You might lie a little. You might steal a little. You might lust a little if you don't do what he says. If you don't get faith and believe you receive the power to meet every evil tendency. That's word, y'all. That's not my opinion. That's what God said. Okay. Let's look at this last thing before we get out of here today. Hallelujah. Not only do you need to believe, we're talking about becoming better receivers, better livers out of the unseen reality more than out of this reality. We have to live in both, but as believers, we're required and commanded to live and take our abilities, our powers, our, our help out of the unseen reality from God. You've got to believe you received what? And this is kind of generally speaking. You've got to believe you receive God's power. Are you with me? You've got to believe, quit focusing on if you got a pain, that I believe I receive healing of my pain. And then you're checking every few minutes to see if the pain is there. You're getting in and out of faith. You just believe you receive God's power working on that pain. Come on. You ain't got to see nothing. When the pain goes away, that ain't when you receive. 
That was just the effect of what you received. Let me see if I can give you an example here. Don't, don't wait to see something before you believe it. And that's what we, that's the key, if, I, if you don't walk away with nothing else, that's one of the key nuggets, I believe, of truths, the reason we don't see more of our folks receiving out of the unseen, receiving what God says we can have in His Word, because we're waiting till we see something before we really believe it. Come on. We are. Truth be told, I ain't saying everybody, but I'm talking kind of general here. We're waiting till we see the change and say, ooh, glory. Come on. Come on. I'll give you an example, John 20, 25. It says, so the other disciples kept telling him, they were talking to Thomas. Don't be a Thomas, okay? It says, we have seen the Lord, but he said to them, unless I see in his hands, he was living out of which reality? The seen reality. And the marks made by the nails, and put my finger into the nail prints, and put my hand into his side, I will never believe it. And that's where a lot of us are. We're not going to believe God's going to heal us. We're not going to believe God's going to meet our needs. We know it's right to say the other thing. But we've given more attention to what the doctor has said, what the lawyer has said. Oh, you're going to lose that. You're going to, you, you, know, you, you know, we get into fear. We get into unbelief. We get into doubt. I mean, you, 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 I, I'm ADD. I'm manic depression. I'm telling you, in my day and time, I don't count the things that I didn't see God do. I don't understand it all. But I count the things that I saw God do because I've got to encourage and, and stay in faith if I'm going to live this life. I've seen people that were manic depression come to themselves. I've seen cut hands disappear. I've seen lawyers dismiss cases when they didn't have no good reason other than they made a mistake. Come on. I've seen personally incurable diseases, ulcerated colitis, you know, gone, no surgery. I've seen that. I've experienced it. You follow what I'm saying? Now, the doctors will say it's in remission, but I looked that word up, and it says that word means cancel. My sins have been remitted. Come on. I go with what the unseen realm say, not what the seen realm say. See, in this realm, they got even different definitions for what definitions that realm say. That realm say, I'm forgiven. That realm say, I'm just a sinner saying by grace. Come on. That realm say, I'm the righteousness of God in the anointed one, Jesus. This realm say, we're only human, and we all going to mess up. Come on. You better know which word you're living out of. In John 27, the same chapter down in the 27th verse, then he said to Thomas, Jesus speaking, reach out your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless and incredulous, but stop your unbelief and believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, do you believe, trust, and have faith. Blessed and happy and to be envied are those who have never seen me and yet have believed adhered to and trusted and relied on me. We've become good at believing that Jesus died for our sins, and we've never, ever seen him, never, ever seen him with our natural eyes. But we believe he died and he rose again. What I'm submitting you to you today, don't do like Thomas in the other areas of the things that God has clearly described to us that exist to us in his promises, in the unseen reality, the things that are not revealed to our natural senses. Don't flip the script, so to speak. Don't do anything different, but believe you have received the same power that made you a new person and regenerated your soul and washed away and cleansed you from all your sin. Believe you received that same power to heal your body. To change the situation. To send the mighty angels and protect you and deliver you. It's going to step on the plane and fly. Come on. Get rid of the fear. 
Get rid of the phobias. Quit looking, listening only to those psychologists. Nothing against psychologists, but what they say don't trump what God has said. He said he has given you a spirit of power and of love and of sound mind, not a spirit of fear. Receive that spirit. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. We could take time and we could look through the book of Hebrews and, and make many, many examples that are given, personally have given a few, but we could look in, uh, at Mary. What did she believe when the angel came to her and said, you're going to give birth to the Messiah? And she said, Lord, be it unto me according to your word. But then she did ask the one question, how is that going to happen? She's looking at the seen realm and the seen reality. How that's going to happen? I ain't even been with no man because that's the only way we you know that that can happen. He said... The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Can't see him. Come on. Now with these natural eyes, the power of God is going to come on you. And that same power, that same substance, that same spiritual power that's unseen and most time unfailed created a baby in her womb. That same power can create a new kidney. That same power can restore vision. That same power can turn situations around. That same power can stop a car that should have kept going. Come on. Come on. Come on. I hope your faith is being stirred up this morning because some of you are going to receive if you, if you let it come on in. If you're being skeptical this morning or you're scrutinizing what I'm saying, you won't receive nothing. Trust me, you won't. But if you take God's word, now because I'm talking, if you take God's word and you just receive his word like Mary did and said, be unto me according to your word, you'll receive some stuff this morning. Some things will begin to change. You'll lay hold of the power of God in those situations that you need some help. Come on. Hallelujah. I mean, Sarah, she was, what, 90-something years old. Hallelujah. But in, my, in Hebrews 11 and 11, it talked about her, that Sarah had faith and was able to receive power to conceive. She didn't wait till she saw her stomach going out to say, come on. Abraham didn't wait till he saw Sarah. He said, I believe I've received the promise of God. Come on. Before he saw anything. And we could go on and on and on. I mean, the woman with the issue of blood, she went behind Jesus and she said, but if I touch the hem of his guard, now be whole. She wasn't, saying, she wasn't saying that she believed she received total moving of the sickness and disease. She wasn't looking for that. She was looking for the power. She knew power flowed out of him. That's why she wanted to touch him. The Bible says all that touched him, power flew out of him. Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? Because he perceived power came out of him. That power will do everything that God said he will do. Some of you need to touch the hem of his garment this morning. Some of you need to believe you have received the power of God working in that situation today. No matter what you see, no matter what you feel, no matter what other people see or what they're saying or what they're hearing, you need to get your nose in the book and study and meditate in it till your hearts get fully persuaded that what you don't see don't matter. But what God says trumps that. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to have to close here. Amen. Amen. I hope you got something out of that this morning. But I do want to pray for a few people this morning before we dismiss. If you're this, in here this morning and you heard me talking about this stuff, this is really for people that are, are born again, but I believe God still has gotten your attention. Because you've been wanting to change, you're tired of the way you're living, you keep doing the same cycle over and over, sinful cycles of lying, stealing, drugging, addictions, just can't get it together. Maybe you even look good to everybody else on the outside, but you still got inward issues going on that you just can't seem to shake. I submit to you one of the reasons is you need to give your life to the Lord. And that power that we've been talking about this morning that exists, that's not revealed to our physical senses, that power of God, the power of salvation is available right now. It's available, not to everyone, it's available to only to him that will receive it. And the way you receive it is you believe in your heart that it's here for you. 
and you say with your mouth, I believe it's here and I receive it. And God will come in and he'll turn you into a whole new person. He'll make you a new person on the inside. And then you'll begin to affect your outside. If that's you this morning, you're ready to get your life together with God, make peace with him, not only for this world and this life and this reality, but into the one that comes as forever and fix. We call it heaven and hell. It exists. It really does. It's not revealed to our physical senses, but it really exists. And one day, all of us are going to be judged according to what we've done in our bodies, and we'll be determined where we get to spend that eternity. The only way to make certain that you're headed toward the right place, if you want to go to heaven, is you got to make peace with God in this side, in this reality, the one we can feel and see. So that's you, if that's you this morning, I want you to stand to your feet. We're going to pray for you. Just stand or raise your hand if you don't feel like standing, raise your hand at me. I see one back there. Anybody else want to get right with God, get their sins forgiven? Come on. Anybody? I see another. Why don't you stand up with us? Go, come on, stand up with us. The reason I'm having you standing is not to embarrass you or anything like that, but when you stand up, you're saying yes, and I don't care who, who sees it. I believe this thing. Come on. It'll do something for you later to make a public confession now. Now I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. If you got personal items, grab them and just come down here and meet, meet me at the front. And if you didn't stand to raise your hand before now, come on anyway. We'll pray with you and get you into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now there's one last thing I want to do while these are, are, while these are coming for salvation. Also, there's some of you out here this morning, as we talked about miracles and needs being met by the power of God, your heart jumped. You believe that. And there's things in your life you have need of. I want you to stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right where you are. There's some miracles you need. There's some turnarounds you need. There's some help you need. Things been going on too long. Manic depression. Come on. Out of a job too long. The Bible tells me I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Come on. God's got a job for you somewhere. Good one. And he has the ability and the power to influence the minds and the hearts of men to make it a divine connection take place. Come on. So quit looking at your skill level. Quit looking at your education level. And look to your almighty God that's standing ready to help you. And he'll release his power on your behalf. Won't he now? All things are possible to him that believe. Come on. Well, let's take care of business up here front first, and then I'm going to pray for y'all. Y'all just repeat this after me, and y'all can echo it with us, D.C. family. Just say, Father God, thank you for the privilege to get things right with you before I leave planet Earth, before I die. I stand before you now, God, confessing, admitting that I'm a sinner. I repent. I make a decision to turn in my heart, my mind, and my deeds and do things your way. Help me. Teach me your ways. I believe that Jesus died and paid the price for all of my sins and you raised him from the dead. You said, God, if I do what I just did, that your power would come into me now and save me. I receive it now. Salvation in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now I want y'all to just do a few more things. We got Pastor Aubrey and his wife, Bonetta, over here. They want to give you a few things, talk to you, answer questions, pray for you. If you go with them for just a moment, and they'll take care of that. Let's give them a hand as they go. Amen. Now, y'all that are standing, lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Father God, I'm going to release the faith command over these people this morning. Many are standing up right now looking to receive from you your power, whether it be sickness, disease, health, mental issues, wisdom, peace, joy, God, relational issues, God. As these hands are lifted up like antennas, God, sticking up toward heaven, we believe God right now. We receive your power in Jesus' name to reduce to nothing 
the works of the devil, to bring healing and wholeness to bodies, to bring peace to minds and relationships, to provide and meet every need that pertains to life. In Jesus' name, say, I believe, I, believe. I have received the power of God working on my behalf. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, the Word of God is working mightily in me and for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You are dismissed.